Hello and welcome to Learn with Indrajit. This is another video in the series of videos titled Building a To-Do Management System Application in the latest .NET 8 framework from Microsoft. In this series of videos, we are building together a very simple To-Do Management System application to learn simple concepts in .NET Core 8. In the previous video, we learned how to implement a custom exception handling middleware to handle exceptions throughout the web API project. If you haven't watched that video, please go ahead and watch that too. In this video, we'll be learning how to implement Serilog to log errors in the SQL Server database for the web API project. I have listed all the steps that we are doing in these videos in my blog. It is uh, learnwithindarjeet.com, Indarjeet with an E. So the previous videos list is here where we implemented a custom exception handling middleware. All the steps are listed here. You can take help from here also. And Whatever steps we are going to follow in this video, I have listed those also, right? So let's get started. So to implement Seri log in the web API project to log errors in the SQL server, we need to follow three simple steps. First is to add Serilog NuGet packages into the web API or the suitable project. Second is adding Serilog settings in the app settings.json file of the web API project. And the third one is to plug in this middleware in the request pipeline and tell the application to use Serilog request logging. So first thing first, we want to install the necessary NuGet packages, which is serilog.aspnet core, serilog.settings.configuration, serilog.syncs.msql server. Serilog is a very rich library for logging errors into different syncs. So here in this case, we are using msql server as the sync. The sync can be a text file, it can be Oracle DB or uh, many more. I would highly recommend you go through Serilog documentation, their GitHub um, repo and read about this powerful library. So let's go to Visual Studio. Now here, because Serilog functionality, we want the same thing to be implemented in the web app project that will be coming here for the front-end application. The front-end application will be in Razor Pages. We are going to uh, add the web app project over here from the next and the subsequent videos. So the best place to install Serilog is the infrastructure project because it will be referred by web API as well as the web app. So let's right click on the infrastructure project and click on manage NuGet packages. In the browse, we'll search for serilog.aspnet core. So 8.00 is the latest stable. Let's install. Then we want to go for Serilog syncs configuration. Okay. Let's install that. And the sync will be Serilog syncs.msql server. Okay. So the third one is not installed. Let's save that, see the output. 
okay let's go back okay here it is so we we have installed ASP.NET Core settings.configuration and syncs.ms SQL Server packages to the infrastructure project now Let's go to the app settings.json file of the web API. And put the serilog related settings over here. So it says, hey serilog, we are using the MS SQL sync to log the errors. Minimum level, default minimum level is warning and we are overriding the system error level and the Microsoft error level. We are writing to, this is also an array. So we can use multiple syncs and multiple settings over here. As of now, we are just using MS SQL Server. So we have provided the connection string, the database, the server, the database, we are saying that the table name should be web api logs the schema name is dbo by default it is dbo but in case your schema name is different you need to specify that over here or to create table we have set to true because if the table is not there we are configuring serilog to create that table restrict to minimum level error and then we have some column specifications like for example the primary column name should be id we don't want these columns in the table the id will be a non clustered index and the timestamp will be in utc format right so these are the serilog configuration settings now let's go to the pipeline and add serilog so let me take that thing from here so we are creating a log and adding it to the host builder right so in this line we are creating a logger using the logger configuration of serilog we are telling it to read the configuration from configuration uh, the app settings.json file and create a logger then add this logger to log.logger and builder.host to use the serilog right now in the request pipeline let's use serilog so we were we are telling the app to use serilog request logging right so in one to do groups controller in the line number 37 we threw an exception in the last video too so let's hit this endpoint again and see what serilog does so f5 to run the application in debug mode here we are in swagger and let's go to to do groups controller and hit the get endpoint okay so this will throw an exception so let's hit continue this one is from the previous video where we implemented a custom exception handling middleware let's go to the database and see what serilog has done here so in the tables let's refresh so here is the web api logs table and here it has logged the exception let's copy that and let me show you in a different window how it looks like so it is the stack trace of the exception test exception the inner exception was test inner exception and it is coming from to do groups controller.cs line number 37 and other details are also here so 
Serilog has successfully logged the error into SQL Server Web API Logs table. The similar way, we'll be implementing Serilog for the Web App Logs. So at this stage of the application, we have our API ready, implementing the clean architecture, having three modules, the to-do groups, to-do list and to-dos, along with exception handling, Serilog implemented. So from the next and the subsequent videos, we'll be implementing the front-end application. This front-end application can be a Razor Pages application, it can be MVC, it can be um, Angular application, React.js application or a Blazor application. But we'll be starting with implementing the front-end application in Razor Pages. We'll be implementing admin LTE template for the UI part. We'll be configuring a HTTP client service to consume this web API. We'll be implementing toaster notifications. We'll be implementing inline edits, Ajax. And there will be a lot of stuff that uh, is coming in the uh, subsequent videos, right? Please hit the like button if you really like the content of these videos. Also tell me in comments, what are you learning from these? Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And don't forget to share these videos with your friends and the community so that they can get advantage. Thank you for your time. Keep learning.